Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am finally coming to you with another of my travel vlogs. I haven't done one of these in, oh my gosh, since like last autumn or something stupid like that. This one in particular needed a lot of planning because this essentially is covering mainland Malaysia, which is basically the kind of long strip that at the top you've got Thailand and then at the bottom you've got Singapore. We did also go to Borneo which is the island, the massive island next to it and that's kind of split in between Malaysia and Indonesia. We did do that but today I'm doing mainland Malaysia and that was kind of about three weeks worth of footage and content and I've been writing in my notebook all the little things that I wanted to tell you about of our time in Malaysia. So uh, we flew to Malaysia from Indonesia. If you haven't seen any of my Indonesia vlogs, then I will link them below. Now, Malaysia is such an amazing country. It's such a mash of different cultures and religions. And one thing that really, really stuck with us was how amazingly lovely all of the Malaysian people are. And I think one of the prime examples of this was when we arrived in Kuala Lumpur, we got an Uber and the driver drove us around all of the attractions in Kuala Lumpur so we would know where to go so we wouldn't get lost. And didn't charge us extra or anything, just took us around all the sites so we knew where to go. As always, I'm probably gonna say this wrong, but we were staying near the Vijaya Times Square, which is basically this massive shopping center in Kuala Lumpur. It is honestly huge. It's got some really cool shops in there. It's got like an Avon, which I find absolutely hilarious because I don't think I've ever come across an Avon shop i've always had the catalogs so it was really cool and at the time i was actually working with avon which was really cool yeah they had loads of different types of shops and they've also got a massive marketplace in that i think it's the downstairs i think it's the whole of the ground floor and it's called central park and it's all different independent sellers selling clothing little quirky knickknacks all sorts of things One of the main ways we got around kuala lumpur were by uber by metro or by walking. Walking obviously is one of the best ways to see a place. And we walked from our hotel and we headed towards the KL Tower. And you've got the tower and then you've also got this amazing kind of park around the tower. And it's got like a forest canopy walk, which is really, really cool. It was just like a little oasis in the middle of a huge bustling city. In the evening, we headed to the Patronus Towers. Now these towers are probably one of the main attractions in Kuala Lumpur. It's almost like the postcard of Kuala Lumpur. They're very busy, but at night it is beautiful because the towers are all lit up. It's just, the whole area kind of is quite lit up so you can take some good pictures. As I said, it's busy, so just to warn you, but totally worth going to. Now, at the kind of base of the towers is a massive shopping center and you've got all different types of shops in there as well. You can even go up to a bar up in the towers you have to be quite we have to be dressed appropriately which is kind of makes sense so i didn't have any heels with me obviously because who brings heels with them backpacking <laughs> not me it was kind of a shame i was even contemplating going and buying something um, to wear with the dress that i had in the end we just decided not to um, i think if you kind of know about it and got it planned totally do it it sounds really really cool now on the other side of the towers on the side away from the main road is a huge, I wouldn't say it's a lake. It's basically just a huge kind of pond lake area. And they do water shows that go along with music, which is really, really amazing to watch. And they go on for ages as well. So we've got some cool footage of that. <laughs>
side you've got like a little mini park and it's a lot quieter than the roadside and personally i found it better to getting pictures here than on the other side because i could actually get in the photo and get most of the towers in as well so after a few days in Kuala Lumpur, we caught a bus up to the Cameron Highlands. The Cameron Highlands are in the mountains in Malaysia. And let me warn you, the temperature seriously drops. Obviously we went there kind of in shoulder season, so it was still really warm, but up in the mountains, no. I found myself back in my jeans, which was really weird because I'd spent Mm, probably a good month or two in just shorts and dresses and things like that so it was really weird to actually put jeans back on now this is going to sound really weird but in some ways the Cameron Highlands reminded me of like a Swiss ski resort because it had just such scandy vibes to the architecture it's really weird going around because it just felt like you were you know somewhere in uh, that's a ski resort but in the summer it was really bizarre i really recommend the cameron highlands there are some great places that you can explore if you like hiking there are loads of hiking trails that you can do some of them you can do just like a short one there are some longer ones i think but you need to do some research into those now we did a kind of a couple of short hikes ourselves that were maybe like half an hour to an hour from the main kind of township in cameron highlands I can't remember the, I don't think there was an actual name for it because there's different towns around it like Bring, Bring Chang and Ipo, I think. But I don't know what the where we were staying, where it was called. I think it is actually called Cameron Highlands. I'm not entirely sure. But you can go to all sorts of different ones. And one we went to was the Hutan Lipa Parit Falls. Getting there is a really cool hike. You go through all different types of places you go through forests you go across bridges you go across this like really nice picnic area it's just a really nice hike now let me warn you i mean when we went in april um in shoulder season you will start to get some of the rains and the rains in cameron highlands are torrential they are short sharp and fast we were in our hotel when we first experienced it and it was just crazy watching it because it just heavens just opened and it just emptied everything <laughs> onto the highlands a great way to see the highlands is by doing a tour because you can't really get places easily so the first stop on the tour that we went to was the sampo temple in the township of brinchang as i mentioned before now this place is beautiful we got here i think it was like nine o'clock in the morning and it was deserted apart from us uh, which was amazing obviously for photos and getting to explore at our own pace now this is a buddhist temple and inside it you've got kind of different rooms in the main courtyard and inside you've got these amazing golden statues and shrines and there's even one room where the tiles on the wall have little buddhas on it's just a really nice little details like that were really cool to find on the tour are kind of things that you can see elsewhere but you kind of have to put, not put up with it but you just have to go along with it but the next place we went to was the butterfly gardens they're beautiful you can see butterfly gardens most places but this one has some of the biggest butterflies i have ever seen in my life like they were the size of my hand or bigger <laughs>
and then you also got like a little mini kind of um zoo in there as well so you've got reptiles i think there were some rabbits and guinea pigs yes i think there were and some raccoons i think as well liked the green snake there was a little green like thin snake which kind of had a bit of a sassy head which was really cool mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. oh my god now one of the main highlights of this tour and the thing that we mainly did it for was going to the tea plantations we went to the bow tea plantation and bow is kind of the main tea in malaysia and i think they ship it elsewhere i'm not entirely sure but we went to the tea plantations and it was so worth going you have the most incredible views over the hills which are just to the eye can see tea plantations it's crazy so you can see the tea being picked and they've got like a big basket on their back and then they just kind of put it in there like that as they're picking and again it was really quiet there weren't many people there which was really cool see so again Good for pictures one thing that i found really cool that i kind of found out was that the tea doesn't smell on, like anything on the plant now we were supposed to go to the factory as well and see the process of them making and processing the tea leaves but apparently if they they don't work on a sunday and we did it on a monday and obviously because they're not picking anything on the sunday on a monday the factory doesn't open because there's no tea to be processed because no one's picked it the day before so obviously we could see them picking it ready for opening on tuesday the next stop was the mossy forest this is quite far up in the mountains and it's a really beautiful place you can take a hike along kind of wooden bridges through the canopy and the trees are all covered in moss which is very beautiful there were some people taking photos on the trees you're not supposed to actually step onto the trees because it kills the moss and the moss doesn't grow back along this trail you can carry on up to what's it called mount yong bella but it's like a two-day hike so obviously if you plan to do that then great but if you're on like a day tour don't go farther than like where the bridges stop because then you'll just keep going and you'll never come back <laughs> We then went to one of the many strawberry farms in the Cameron Highlands. If you didn't know, Cameron Highlands are known for strawberries as well as their tea. Now we went to Raju's Hill Strawberry Farm. They actually grow the strawberries out of like, when we say these compost bags, you see these kind of benches and the bags and then the strawberries kind of sprouting out of them, which is pretty cool. And I think from what I remember, I think a Scotsman came over and showed them how to grow strawberries and they kind of adapted it because obviously it's not the best climate um, and the best soil conditions and so that's how they grow it's a lovely little place to go you can pick your own strawberries there's also a cafe and you can buy smoothies cake um ice cream obviously pineapple of strawberries if you don't want to pick your own then we walked back through one of the markets to get to our jeep because he was parked down the hill think it's kind of an incentive for you to go and buy some stuff at the market but it's fine <laughs> they've got to make their money somehow they were selling all different types of things from strawberries to flowers to succulents oh my gosh i really wanted to take a succulent home because there were so many and i really wanted one of my own we then went to cactus point which essentially is a garden center <laughs> this was definitely a filler one i mean it was cool because there were loads of different cacti and um of the succulents and plants but it's basically just a garden center <laughs> then we went to the time tunnel museum this was so cool because i don't think i would necessarily have gone there myself 
if we were just doing kind of our own thing. There were lots of different memorabilia, but then there was also lots of different exhibits about the history of Cameron Highlands. Now, just a little tip, if you're on one of these tours and they take you to lunch, don't go to the place where they suggest. We did it naively. They take you to kind of like a, it's not really like a mall because there is only a few, it's like a handful of restaurants but, and there's and some shops as well. We found the food wasn't great and it was really overpriced. And I think we could have got something nicer and cheaper elsewhere. But at the time we just went with it and then we went to pay and we were like, okay, this is really overpriced. So just a little warning, go and find your own food, don't necessarily go with the recommendation because they basically get like a commission for taking their tour group to that restaurant. We then got on another bus to Georgetown on the island of Penang. Oh my gosh, this place is probably one of my favourite places in the whole of Asia. Again, it's such a mash of different cultures and religions, but in a quite a small area so like you can walk around a corner and there'll be a chinese temple and then around the corner there'll be a mosque around the other corner there'll be like a buddhist temple and then you've got a huge mix of like great food scene street art it's just got everything <laughs> in the Chinese part of Georgetown. I don't know whether you call it Chinatown like in most cities, but yeah, we stayed in the Chinese part. And it was such a great base because we were near to so much. And down the street from where we were was the Hainan Temple. And this is a Chinese temple. And we, one evening we actually stumbled across a religious celebration, which was amazing because they had the dragons and they were doing the, like a dance through the temple and we went in and they had quite limited English but we kind of learned it was kind of like a birthday in their religion so it only happens once a year and we'd come across it which is cool and we got to um, make wishes at some of the shrines and it was just a really cool thing to experience something we hadn't really planned <laughs> really wanted to go to was the Penang Peranakan Mansion. Now this is a 19th century mansion and you can go in and you can experience what life was like for an upper class family. Now they run regular tours for free, obviously you pay a ticket to go in, but they have lots of different languages for these tours. So if you manage to get on one, highly recommend it. And the tour guide we had was so enthusiastic as well. He was great. I really recommend if you can get a tour, go on one of the tours. Now, as I said before, Georgetown is known for its street art. There are loads of different ones that you can see, but some of the most popular ones and most well-known ones are uh, the street art done by Ernest Zakharovic. Definitely said that wrong. <laughs> so you, for instance, you've got the boy on a motorcycle, got kids on a bike. There are quite a few dotted around and I think you can actually get maps 
like street art maps and you can kind of do your own walking tour and there's quite a few information centers around georgetown as well which you can pop in and go and get one of these maps there's also so many great shops and food places to try like we found a really cute owl shop everything in it was owls which i was in my element because I love owls, <laughs> one of my favorite birds. We then caught a speedboat to Langkawi. Now Langkawi is a beautiful island, it's quite a big island. It's kind of mainly a beachy island. There isn't a huge amount to do in terms of attractions and culture, but we found it was kind of like a great mini holiday in our backpacking adventure because we mainly just went and tried different food, went to the beach. We did go to try and do the cable car, which takes you up to a sky bridge on the island, but we found that quite expensive. I think just in general, quite a lot of the attractions on Langkawi were quite expensive. I specifically recommend the beach that we stayed near. Now this is called Pantai Tenga. Who knows if that's anywhere near how you actually pronounce it. <laughs> now this beach is huge. It is so wide that it never really feels full. Even at sunset, which is probably one of the best times to go, is when all the locals go and you just go and watch the most amazing sunset. After a couple of days on Langkawi, we then traveled back down to Kuala Lumpur because we were flying from Kuala Lumpur to Kota Kanabalu on Borneo, which was kind of our next stop. We loved Kuala Lumpur. Again, probably one of my favorite cities in Asia. And also we got to do some things that we didn't get to do uh, the first time around that we were there. One of those things were the Batu Caves. Now we got the metro out to the Batu Caves, which is um, great. You don't have to get an Uber or anything. The metro is really easy to get. However, when we took the train out, it started to rain. And I'm talking this torrential rain. We kind of waited a bit. It didn't ease up. So we just thought, you know what, we're going to risk it. So we bought some cheap rain max from a seller. Honestly, as soon as the rain started, they like got out the back room and umbrellas and everything. They were so prepared. We climbed the 272 steps all the way up to the temples in the caves. Now, this was before the steps were painted. If you look at the Batu Caves now, they're painted in the most amazing colors. And in some ways, I kind of wish it was like that when we went. So it's kind of cool that we got to experience that before it got painted and probably got really busy with people trying to get Instagram shots and stuff. And it's just really beautiful in that, um, really big caves. I think you have to pay to go to one of the temples, I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, it's definitely worth a visit. And you get to see the monkeys because the monkeys hang out on the steps. which will be my next travel vlog. Thought this video would get a little bit longer if I included my whole time in Malaysia in this one video. I love doing these videos. I love kind of recapping on our trips because they bring back some really nice memories and um, it's cool to go through the footage and the photos that we took. If you did like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Comment down below if you've been to Malaysia before, if you want to go, are there any places on your wish list um, that, you're, that you really want to go to. Please do subscribe if you are new and I will see you in my next video. Bye!